my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. And we're going to be bringing you a very special mandolin build. But unfortunately, this was a build that was done quite a while back and we can't find all the uh, clips to it. We've got most of it. In fact, I think this particular uh, part one is built with like 45 different video clips, something to that effect. Melissa will tell you more about that maybe on the screen. But uh, it's an older video. It was a great mandolin build and it went to the state of Massachusetts. And that's all I'm gonna tell you about it right now. I think you'll enjoy it. Here it goes. I gave the customer a choice of three different backs and this is the back he chose. It's the number two choice out of the three. Very beautiful. It's a very, very, very high quality wood. It's very much quarter sawn, as you can probably see by looking at the end there. The grain goes almost perfectly straight up and down through it. So we're gonna glue it together right now. I really like to make sure it's got perfect glue coverage on both pieces. I do like the glue spreaders. I've used brushes my whole career. You know, it's never too late to learn something new. So thank you to the several viewers that have sent me the glue spreaders. I look at it at an angle so I can see that there's, the glue has been 100% coverage. It's hard to see it just looking straight at it. I like to put another clamp across it the opposite direction and across the opposite side to help hold it flat. And then what I do is I'll take a wedge and put under the center clamp to keep the middle down because once in a while they like to draw up in the middle. I push those in there pretty tight and that keeps it pretty flat. You still have to flatten it on the bottom some usually. It never gets perfectly flat, but it gets pretty close. And that'll set for 24 hours now. Thought I'd show you, here's the customer's choice for the top board. It's very high quality spruce as well. Maybe you can see it from the other side a little better. Very high quality wood. Try to get it up close where it can see the grain. You can see the squeeze out of the glue there. So both the top and the back will set for about roughly 24 hours and then I'll start profiling it and getting it down to the proper thickness before I do any carving. Here's what the Massachusetts mandolin looks like all glued up. Got a lot of work to do that's really thick. We're going to have to sand this down to the right thickness. Same way with this. In fact, this is so much I may run it through the planer first and see how the planer does with this. And then we have to, you know, get it level on the other side too. And we'll probably do that in the sander for sure. But here we go. Do a little bit of measuring to make sure that we're where we want to be. Okay, we need to take quite a bit more off of this one yet. We got to take about 70 thousandths off of this one yet. So I'm going to do them separate from this point on because I don't want to screw up. Well, I believe the motor got a little warm and overloaded, so I'm going to have to wait until it cools off a little bit. Do it again.
Well, there's the top for the Massachusetts mandolin. Beautiful piece of wood. Couldn't get one much better, I don't think. Just really nice. Otherwise, we're just about ready to start making this thing carvable. Got a little more fine detail to cut out here on the other band saw, but I'm not going to show that. And then we'll route the edges and get it ready to carve. There's the back for the Massachusetts mandolin. I just got a little more detail to cut out. And then we're ready to carve. We're getting ready to saw this up for sides for the Massachusetts mandolin, and I don't know, I've just noticed there's kind of a different flame thing right along this edge. It doesn't really match the wider part here, so I think I'm just gonna cut that off, and that way it'll be a more consistent decoration all the way across there. So here we go. There's three pieces. This one's pretty thick. I might try to thickness saw it first. It's kind of wobbly though. It's not really perfectly flat. So in other words, the surface is kind of doing this all the way across it. So I may have to run it through my thickness sander just to get it flat before I can do anything anyway. I don't know. It's probably not worth trying to resaw it. I'll just do it on the thickness sander. Sorry about the air being on. I'm not gonna do much talking during this anyway. You can see I'm at my little trusty bender here. It's up to 365 basically, which is where I've been using it lately. I was wetting this down and running it across here to heat it up, just to maybe soften it up a little bit. I'm gonna bend that big steep curve first the wood seems like it naturally wants to bend this direction more to me, so that's the direction I'm going to try to bend it in. So let's see what happens. Here we go. And the thing is, I like to hold it there till I don't hear it sizzling, and it's not really sizzling right now. And Generally that dries it out pretty good as you can see it's pretty well dry and it holds the shape pretty well that way I don't feel like I got any breaking that time which is unusual on something that tight Maybe just the teeniest little chippy stuff right on the very edge, but that shouldn't be a problem I'm gonna go back around it one more time and 
just kind of lock it in place there, hopefully. Just hold it there a little longer than you think you need to, and it should be locked in pretty good. Well, it lifted up a little bit that time, unfortunately, but that can be pressed back down and glued. I don't think that's going to be much of a problem. Next thing I do is I mark where I want that bend to be. Right there should be about the center of the bend. This one's a little more difficult to do because you're inside here, but... Hold it there till it just quits sizzling. That should be pretty good. That's not too bad, really. I think that's doable right there. Now we're just going to put a long bend in this whole thing here. This bend isn't that terribly critical because it's just a long curve. And the wood is flexible enough to, to take care of that for the most part. It's not doing too bad. Go through that one more time, I think. I think I can make that fit in there. We're going to see. That fits just about as perfect as you can get one to fit, I think. Mark where I want to cut it off. And we'll do that. That's really fitting nice. Alright. That fits really, really nice. So now we're going to make the next most difficult piece, which is... Well, actually, there's two pieces that are pretty difficult. This piece here is pretty difficult, which you can barely see, I'm sure. And this piece here is the most difficult because it's got bins on both ends. Of course, this does too a little bit. Anyway, we're going to make this long one first. I've got a little more bend there than I need. That's usually a good thing because it, it likes to relax. There's a little bend in this that's subtle that bends back towards the neck. It's very subtle, but I'm going to try to put that in there now. It's kind of difficult to do. I generally put that bend in first, but I thought I'd try putting it in second this time. I think it's better to put it in second because it comes out when you put it in first. Yeah, this is better. It's better to put it in second. Now you can see there, a lot of people don't see that bend, but it is there. At least it is on the Lloyd Lore mandolins. Okay, there's the belly for that. All right, we'll see how we're doing here. Oh, that looks really good. I'm real happy with that. There's about the center of the next bend. Uh, I've marked it here for the center of the next bend going the other way. As long as you can hear it sizzling, you just need to hold it there. When it sizzling stops, then that's pretty much it. Then it seems to hold itself pretty well. That looks good. Looks real good. I'll tell you, that new bender just makes this so much easier. Golly. I can't even tell you. It's not even a comparison compared to the way it used to be. It was so difficult before. All right. So we're going to bend the next hardest piece. And then what I'm going to do on this piece, it's a little tighter bend. I'm going to bend it up here at the smaller diameter area. And we just got to put a counter bend in here, and I think we're about done. This is a little harder to do. All right, that should be pretty close. All right, I think I got it a little too short. I need to make the bend come up a little further. This one's always hard to judge. 
end here has straightened out some, so I'm going to pull it back again. Well, I'd be hard pressed to make that any better. That really turned out easy and nice. It's just almost perfect in the mold. And I say almost, I pretty much mean it's perfect. It's about as good as it gets. I'm going to bend the last little tail there. And there you can see it. It fits that mold just about like a glove without any extra things in there to hold it or anything. Just almost perfect. have it it really fits up nice it couldn't hardly fit much better we're about to cut the truss rod slot in this uh, Massachusetts mandolin I've got the saw basically centered up you don't have to get it perfect just get it real real close to center and then we work off of the center both ways to get the width of your slot so this cuts a real narrow curve so I know it's not going to be a problem I've got it set at about 500 thousandths depth, which is a half inch. If you divide that by 40, that'll give you some idea of the millimeters. So let's go ahead and cut it in there. See how deep the slot is. 
500 and six thousandths, so that's pretty dang close. <laughs> it's only six thousandths off. That's pretty good. All right, um, the width wise, I don't think it's quite wide enough yet, but it's getting close. It's 160, 170 thousandths wide. That might be enough. I got a 3 16th rod. I think that may be enough, so let's go check that out. Well, I, the rod kind of goes, but it's a little bit tight in places. I mean, I could probably do it by hand, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and bump it a little bit more, or maybe run it through a couple more times. Maybe it'll clean itself up. Fine. The rod goes in there just about perfect now. It's just got a little bit of play, but almost no play. So that's perfect. So we'll move on from there. You won't find it on a well-traveled highway. Not even on a dusty gravel road. And you have to want to be there when you find it. For it's not on any maps I know Out across the field, through the pasture Climb along the steep and rocky trail When you That's all there is to it. We'll let that set overnight and then we'll start profiling the neck. Across that little creek in the valley You'll see that vine-covered church on the hill Vine covered church above the valley where the congregation gathered to pray. Built with their hands from the forest, now stands as a marker for the grave. steeple leans slightly to the right and though all the windows are shattered I believe it was Colin that got me these glue spreaders that was another one of those gadgets I didn't realize I could use but I do like them and I do use them so thanks Colin and there were some other people that got me some glue spreaders too and I use those as well the blue ones so I do like them, they're good. You can still hear them singing at night. Her brothers and sisters who worship gather in. I put this extra clamp on there to just keep the veneer tight. The veneer was sticking up just a little bit taller than the vise could clamp. So that should hold it, I believe. It's in there really tight, so that should keep that veneer really good and flat. So we'll work on this tomorrow morning. Well, you can see we've got the laminate on here. I've also traced the shape of the peg head on here, although I'm not ready to cut that out yet. What I need to do first is trim this part of this neck down, and then I can put this thing in a jig and cut out the peg head. But we're gonna trim this down first, shape it roughly, and then we'll go on from there. In that holy place still, Though they lie at rest in the valley Beneath that vine-covered church on the hill That vine-covered church above the valley Where the congregation gathered to pray Built with their hands from the forest Now stands as a marker for the grave Not too bad for just a quick shaping. That'll get us on to the next step. Where the congregation gathered to pray, built with their hands from the forest, now stands as a marker for the grave. 
It still stands as a marker for the grain. I went over and drilled this hole for this little scroll here and came back. pretty darn good about the only thing I want to do yet is cut a little bit further into there and we'll do that with the smaller band so I'm not going to film that little piece but that's all I need to do and I think we're done with this part right here roughs it out it's still pretty rough obviously but that knocks off a lot of the wood that I don't have to do by hand so now we'll do everything else by hand well you can see I roughed it out it got a little deep right there but not anything to worry about but uh, I mean even as care I'm just pointing that out as careful as I try to be you'll still get a gouge here or a gouge there and you just got to be really conservative and then that way when you you know if you try to be aggressive with it you're gonna go too deep this is no problem at all but I'm just pointing it out that that went deeper than I hoped it would go but it, it's not as deep as we need to go yet anyway so I'm not worried about it but I just want to point it out that it'll get away from you and so you want to be very careful with that grinder thing if you use that okay so here we go we're gonna use the this uh, little palm plane that a viewer sent to me and I you know modified it significantly to make it match feel more like my other little planes it works really good especially for the rough out and you know that's when we just need to hog a lot of wood away and you know this saves my fingers so when I get down to the detail then I can use my fingers You can see this thing really knocks the wood out. It's not a long process, if, especially if you, you, know, you get used to using tools like this. It can be very quick. Probably almost as quick as you could do it with a machine. Not quite, but almost. But definitely more precise in terms of uh, hand-operated machines. Certainly a CNC could do better. But on the other hand, there's a million CNC machine made instruments out there and sometimes that quality is not all that great. This is a beautiful piece of wood for the top. You really couldn't hardly pick a better piece and of course I do hand select each piece. This is an awesome piece of wood. You can see we've just, on this side over here, we've just about gotten rid of all the grinder marks. Doesn't take long at all. Of course you 
doesn't hurt that I've done this a bunch of times. I know where I need to take the wood off and I don't have to think about it too much. Okay, that side there, all the grinder marks are gone. Now we'll start over here. And this is where it got just a little deeper than I was planning on. It's nowhere near deep enough, so we don't have to worry about it. Because I'm going to go deeper with the plane. But, you know, you just want to be careful with that grinder. It really doesn't take long to get it down to a reasonable spot here. And then we'll use the little finger plane to detail it. I can't detail with this plane very well. It's just my hand's too far away from the blade. And I don't feel comfortable using it for detail work, even though I'm sure you could. Pretty much all the grinding marks are gone on this side now. Because this is such a high grade piece of wood, it just carves like butter. I mean, it really does. It really makes a difference on the grade of the wood, and how it carves. This stuff just carves like butter. Okay, I'm gonna clean up this mess, switch to the little plane, and start the detail. It's rough still, but we're getting there. I'm not going to eat up any more footage on this. I'll just show you what it looks like when I get the top finished. I've got it uh, roughed out pretty well, and I say roughed out because it's only, I've used the tooth blade on it, but I haven't scraped it yet. It feels real smooth and symmetrical when you look across it and everything, and I've, I've put my straight edge across there, and the sides look real symmetrical, and it looks just looks real good. It's got an uncanny sound for this stage. Keep in mind there's no, you know, it's still super thick because it, the inside hasn't even been carved yet, but it's really got a nice tone. Boy, it's going to be something. It's really a nice piece of wood. You can't hardly beat it, I don't think. So, I guess I'll scrape this outside here and make sure it's just like I want it. And if it is, then we'll start on the inside. You can probably see I've already started scraping this side and I haven't scraped anything over here yet or up in here. But that, you can see the difference in the smoothness. That's really smooth and this has got the roughness to it. So you just take your scraper and you just go over it like this. It's a wood removal tool and a smoothing tool all built into one. You know, you could say, well, sandpaper does the same thing, but it's so much slower. And this doesn't leave any marks if you do it really well. I can't say I do it well enough to uh, go straight to uh, finish, but sometimes I probably could. It definitely gets rid of any lumps that are in there. You know, if you do have any unevenness, you can take it out with a scraper really fast. 
fact, the scraper is probably the main tool that a person should learn to use if you're going to do this kind of work. And that includes repair work even, because you just always need to take wood off and you need to do it precisely. And this is a very precise tool. You do, just like with other tools, you have to know which way the grain's going to get it to be as smooth as possible. There's a little valley here, and on this side of the valley, right now I have to go this way, otherwise it's going to ruffle it up. But on this side of the valley, I got to go this way. Well, that's a, a quick and dirty job. It's not perfect by any stretch, but it's pretty good. And I can see a little bit right here that I missed. Yeah, that's pretty darn nice. Just a quick, fast scraping job there. Pretty darn smooth. You can maybe see the contour there a little bit. You can see how the contour in here works. It's in pretty good shape. As you can see, I drilled a bunch of holes in this, and I, you know, I had a depth stop on my drill press, and I drilled them to a, a thickness that I know was plenty conservative, you know, and then I took the hand grinder and I ground down to where I could still see all of the holes. None of the holes disappeared. And as long as I can still see the holes, then I know I'm more than thick enough. So I'm in very good shape here, but that did get rid of a lot of wood really, really fast. And now we're just into the hand carving thing again. And for the most part, I'm just gonna go ahead and take everything down to where the holes just disappear, and then we'll start the detail carving. If it would quit loading up on me, it would be pretty fast, but it, sometimes it just fills this up and you can't get any more shavings to go through. Well, that really does make quick work of it. The top's getting light already. We'll show you what that looks like when we get her carved out. Been carving for several hours and this top is very light and very airy. I just weighed it 116 grams. I don't know if it's going to pick up, but I'm going to let you try to hear this. It is an awesome sound. About that long. really has a long sustain really a good sounding top it really is and at only 116 grams it's definitely one of the lightest I've ever made I keep feeling like this trying to feel if I can feel any thick spots any lumps anything out of the ordinary and you'd be surprised what you can feel with your fingers like that you, you can really feel a lot of little stuff and you just keep going back and working on it, you know, like I'm, I just feel something like right here, just very, very, very minor, but you can, you 
can pull that out of there with this scraper, see? It's really feeling nice. I don't really feel any problems. I will point out there's a little bit of bear claw in this, but just very little. Right across here, maybe a little bit right here. It doesn't appear to be going into this side, it's just on this side. And I would say it came from, you know, when you book match it, it probably came from the outer side of, of this piece. Very little though, not much of it at all. I feel a little bit of a hump right here, just a little bit. But again, not very much. I've been checking my measurements. Everything's really nice. It's pretty much at spec, the way I want it to be. It's difficult to get them exactly perfect, but this one's pretty darn close. Probably gonna call that good. I may just set it down and come back to it in an hour or so. When you look at it fresh, you always see more things. So I may do that. Yeah.